God bless you. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. If you get it, you stand. We're going to read this on your screen already. Those of you at home, please, even though you are home, for the respect of the word of God, uh, let's all stand. We read together, read in any language, read in any version. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We can read nine also. Blessed are the peacemaker, for they shall be called sons of God. Amen. Say, Lord Jesus, speak to my heart. You may be seated. We are still working on the beatitude and talking about the secret of a blessed life in the kingdom of God. Amen. So last time we stop by defining what that means to be, to have a pure heart. Amen. We get to where we are talking about, I wanted to talk about the difference between purity and sancti uh, sanctification. Hallelujah. To purify and to sanctify, what's the difference? Sometimes we mix it up. Amen. In this teaching, one of the things I'll be doing is not only to teach you uh, the message, but also try to fix certain wrong definition that we have, okay? Sometimes there are words that we use interchangeably, but they are not the same word. When you're talking about purification and you're talking about justification, it's two different things. Amen? Hallelujah. So, purification takes place in order to certify that someone has been sanctified or set apart for the work of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So somebody has set, been set apart. I, I give you an illustration of when you catch a fish, you, you put it in the boat, and then you clean it. Okay? So what you do is, when you're cleaning, you're purifying. When you're setting apart, you are sanctifying. Hallelujah. All of you are here in this sanctuary right now, and some of you are at home. If I say, to Dorea, I said, Dorea, can you move from there and come over here? And then I tell everybody else, I say, I want you to take a piece of paper and write, Jesus love me. Then I call Dorea, I say, I want you to come over here and just clean this place. You understand? You see that you and Dorea, you are not doing the same thing. She has been set apart to do something else. That's what we call sanctification. Hallelujah. God is setting you apart for him, okay? We look at last time, the Nazarite uh, uh, consecration, how it was done in the book of Numbers chapter 6, how they took them and they brought them outside. And when they brought them, they had to uh, uh, cut their hair and do certain ceremony, hallelujah. In the spiritual realm in the New Testament, purification also takes place, hallelujah. But we say, most of the time in the Old Testament, what you see is that, you know, people have this, 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 this law that you have to be purified before you can be sanctified. But in the New Testament, what we're seeing, Jesus is telling us, he said, come the way you are. Hallelujah. He said, follow me. When he says, say, follow me, I'll make you fisher of men. Hallelujah. At that time, he's calling them to follow him. I want you to understand that Jesus Christ is Emmanuel, right? God with us. So when he's saying, follow me, he's telling them to follow God. You agree? Yeah. Hallelujah. They are following God. They're spending time with God. But this guy, they still messed up. You understand? Many of them are still not living correctly. Sometimes when you're teaching these things, somebody may think like you're encouraging sin. Far away from that. Okay? You're just showing the grace of God. You see, if you understand the grace of God, you, your worship will change. You will understand that there's nothing that you did by your own effort. It's him. Hallelujah. So he said, follow me. So when you're following him, in that process, when we come in John chapter 15, verse 3, we read it last time, Jesus is telling them, he's informing them. You see, when... when, when one, one, one of the difference between a person who has been truly purified and sanctified for the Lord 
and somebody who want to look like they are all spiritual, but they are better than everybody else, basically the way the Pharisees were, is that there will be things taking place in your life, sometimes you don't even know it. Other people are the ones informing you that you have changed. Hallelujah. Because you got no time to be boasting. Hallelujah. You're just living your life and you're letting Christ live in you. Then people who know you for a long time, they are able to make the difference between the old you and the new you. Hallelujah. Jesus is the one informing his disciples, say, you are already pure because of the word that I've given to you. Hallelujah. But they were with him. He allowed them, hallelujah, high invitation, amen? High invitation, high challenge, according to the 3DM. That's what makes a discipleship culture, amen? High invitation means you are embracing people, hallelujah. The way they are, you are bringing them. But then high challenge, you laying challenge for them to leave what you are teaching them. You're holding them accountable. Hallelujah. But when we see in the life of Jesus, he promoted more high invitation. Amen. Because in the invitation, people realize that Jesus cared for them. When people realize that you care for them, then when you put your challenge, they will follow. There's somebody who said, people don't care about what you say until they know how much you care. Hallelujah. And our, our Lord Jesus, that's what he's he, 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 he been doing in the process of purifying our heart. He said, number one, just come. Hallelujah. Say to your neighbor, number one, number one. just come. Hallelujah. You don't have to change. You don't have to clean yourself. You got to do, you, you, you have to do nothing. Just come. Hallelujah. Then when you come to him, eventually, because of his word, he begins to purify you. Hallelujah. One of the areas that need purification big time in our life is our mind. Hallelujah. Say to your neighbor, neighbor, your mind is a battlefield. You understand? Because there's nothing you can take in action without you processing it first. Why is it that when somebody has his brain dead, they say it's dead? The person is breathing. But because his brain is dead, they say, they, they say oh, this person is not going to make it no more. His brain dead. Because everything is going where? In your mind. If you can conceive it, you can believe it, then there is a chance you're going to do it. So what the devil does, he comes into your mind and drops things. Hallelujah. And guess what? The word of God you are hearing also is going where? In your mind. That's where that battle is happening. So what do you have to do? Paul is telling us in the book of Romans, say, renew your mind. Hallelujah. So in the other way, you know that this is the way people are following. This is the way the Pharisee, they taught it. This is the world view. This is the way things has always been. In the Beatitude, Jesus is coming, he said, renew your mind, begin to see kingdom ways. Hallelujah. You have heard, he was told you this, but I'm telling you, this other way. Hallelujah. Now, you know, once we are used to something for a long time, change becomes very difficult. Can we be honest that we have a hard time to change? I mean, to accept change? Sometimes you really see that this is, I need a change. But then you are accustomed to something. You've been, you've been in that thing too long. It became a, your, your, the normal Hallelujah. Some people say your new norm. This is the way it has always been. Even you see in the church, every time you begin to try to change something, if I say like next Sunday, we're not going to start with worship, we're going to start with the word of God. Somebody's going to complain. Because there is a tradition we know we have to start with this and this and this and that. We get used to that. To that. But we serve a God who is a multi-system God. A God that you cannot put in a box. So every time we are, we are provoked for change, we want to dwell there. 
But change is what causes you to make a progress. Hallelujah. So that's when your decision comes in. The purification comes from God. But your decision is there. That's what Paul is saying. Renew your mind. You must renew your mind. You are taking a decision. He said, I know this is what people believe. I know this is what makes sense. If I start acting this way, everybody's going to look at me like funny. They're going to think I'm crazy. They're going to think I'm like I'm acting up. So just to be comfortable, just to be accepted by my friend and my family, I better just go the way everybody is going. You understand? We don't want to look strange. Christians, especially in the first church, they were strange people. Hallelujah. Because they were doing opposite of what everybody's doing. They were strange people. How can somebody come to you? Somebody sent me a video. I don't know if you saw that video. Uh, it's a, one of my boys sent it to me. There's this lady. It's an older lady. Uh, and throwing saliva to his worker. Okay? The worker is from Africa. The way I look at her. Because sometimes I can tell by your head. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And, uh, and the, 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 um, the boss is an American, and beating her. She's working, she's cleaning a uh, plate. Beating her, throwing saliva on her. I was looking at this lady, I'm like, whoa! There are level of patience. I don't think I get there yet. I say, Lord, help me. Hey! <laughs> throwing saliva on her, and I'm like, wow, this is really the beatitude in action here. You know? Well, it's amazing. She kept the calm. She did a thing, and I don't know who was filming it. Herself. Herself, she was filming it. And I look at him like, Jesus Christ, what kind of level of patience is this? This is really kingdom. That's where God is calling us to go to. You understand? To go to. Say to your neighbor, let's go there. Hallelujah. That's the kingdom of God. Let's move on today. Now, we, we, we look at the purification. Let's look at another aspect today, the reward. Because all the beatitude has, this is the attitude, this is the reward. Hallelujah. Blessed be the pure in heart. What's the reward? They will see God. Hallelujah. Attitude is what? Purity of your heart. Hallelujah. Condition is what? Purity of your heart. Purity of your heart. What's the reward? To see God. How many of us want to see God? Hallelujah. Now the question is, what does it mean to see God? Let's look at that today. Exodus chapter 33, 20 to 23. Let's start there. Okay? Let's read together. The Bible says what? But he said... You cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. Now, be careful. They say, you cannot see my face. Okay? That's one thing. You cannot see me in my face. Then he continued. For no one may see me and live. Okay? Then the Lord said, there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. Hallelujah. Continue. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hands until I pass by. Then I will remove my hands and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. Hallelujah. One day I will deal with the entire things, but let me get the point that I'm trying you to get there. Hallelujah. We know that God said to Moses that nobody can see me and live. But Jesus is telling us, blessed be the pure in heart because they will see God. So Jesus, are you telling us to die? You know that if we see him, we're going to die. How do we know? We just read it. 
Now you giving us as a reward death? Is somebody following me? Blessed be the pure in heart. Because they will see God. Hallelujah. But if you see me, you will die. What do you mean then? And now he began to show him, Moses, some strategy that he's supposed to do in order for him to see at least his glory and to see his back. And one of the key elements he tells him, he says, go sit on the rock. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you want to see God? You got to sit on the rock. Amen. Amen. And the rock is who? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Amen. It is only through Jesus Christ that we can see. That's why he told Philip, he said, all this time I've been with you, you never seen me. If you see me, you see God. Hallelujah. Amen. If you sit on the rock, then I'm going to pass. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to let you see my face, but you're going to have some encounter with my presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When they're talking about see God here, it's not literally see God. Amen. Because God is so powerful so glorious that in his glory and in your study and mine, we cannot stand. Hallelujah. Amen. He said to Miriam, he said, Miriam, you and your brother, you're running a mount against my servant. With you, I speak with dream, in dreams. Hallelujah. But with Moses, I speak face to face. Hold on. Did you not just say that nobody can see your face? How do you mean by you see with him face to face? What's happening here, God? There's something called in theology theophany, which means that God taking a particular form to a low man to account to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's like the dove came upon Jesus Christ, and we say it was the Holy Ghost. God took that form for men to be able to deal with it. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ coming on the earth, he took a body of human being, but inside of him is God. Hallelujah. The angel that came to eat with Abraham, they say one of them was the Lord. He took a form. Amen. The angel that met with Joshua, Remember in the book of John, I mean in the book of Revelation, when John saw an angel and he wanted to bow down to him, what did the angel say? Don't bow down to me because you and I, we are servant. But there is another angel that Joshua met before the battle of Jericho. When he came, he told him, remove your sandal. You are in, uh -huh. and he introduced himself as the general of the army of the Lord. Hallelujah. Is the angel of the Lord. Who's that? That's Jesus Theophany. Hallelujah. Because he has a law him. We cannot bow down to the, uh, to the, 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 the angel. But he has a law him. He said, you can bow down in school. Take out your sandal, by the way. Because he was in the presence of the Lord. So when we're saying to see God, it does not mean literally to see God in his all glorious. Hallelujah. It, it, it simply means you are going to have an encounter with God. Hallelujah. And if you have an encounter with God, something is going to happen in your life. Yes. Nobody can ever have an encounter with God and remain the same. It's impossible. He said you will die. That can also be your flesh nature can die, hallelujah, and then you're going to start living a life of righteousness. Amen. Amen. The old things are passed away. Behold, everything is new. Hallelujah. Amen. You understand? You can look at it in, a, in that, that context, but in the context we're talking about is simply having an encounter with God. Now, Moses met with God in the book of Exodus chapter 3, in the burning bush. You remember that, right? Yes. 
The voice is coming from the burning bush. And it's saying what? Take out your sender, right? You're in the holy ground. And they have a conversation. That was God. Is God fire? God used fire as theophany, amen, to be able to communicate with Moses. Did Moses see God? Yes, he did. Hallelujah. But in the form that God chose for Moses to be able to deal with that. Hallelujah. Because if he come in the real form as God Almighty, Moses is in trouble. Hallelujah. Paul, in the book of Acts chapter 9, he saw God. Hallelujah. Jesus appeared to him, and he heard the voice, and God ministered to him. So he had an encounter with God. What happened to Moses? What happened to Paul? Total transformation. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when people are saying, I need to change, I need to change. Stop needing to change. Seek purity of heart. Hallelujah. And the consequences of that is the encounter with God. When you are pursuing holiness, what's going to happen is God said, this child needs me so much. So what he said, you will seek me and I, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart. Hallelujah. Nobody goes in the presence of God seriously and seeking transformation and remain the same. We want to be with him and we want to be ourselves. We want to be with him, we want to be ourselves. I give you, but I'm pulling back. That's our problem. That's why we don't experience the real transformation. I had a testimony about this man of God. He was a theologian. He wrote a book about it and he was teaching where I was. A professor of theology for a long time in a university, and guess what subject he teaches? Holiness. But the man lives in sin himself. When he comes in the classroom, he puts a form, a certain way, where people look at him, they have this uh, idea of this great man of God. But himself in his heart, he know that what's the reality. Ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, what's the reality? It's a top secret, don't tell me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. He was struggling with it for a long time. Until one day he said, enough is enough. He went and locked his house, turned off the light, and kneeled down and began to cry to the Lord. Hallelujah. It's pursuing holiness. He said, God, I can't be faking it forever. You said, be holy as your Father in heaven is holy. It's a command. So if this is really a command, then grant me the grace to live this. He pray, pray, according to his book, he said, he doesn't even remember how long he prayed. Suddenly, he, he, he found out that the light was in the room. He remembered that, no, I turned off the light. The light was not here. Hallelujah. So what light is this? He understood that there was another light. It's him who was there. It was not this light, but Jesus Christ showing up, he is the light. It was that light in the room, and he did not understand what was happening. He said he felt something coming out of him. And suddenly, transformation happened in his life. That's what John Wesley calls the an entire sanctification moment. Hallelujah. Every Christian needs that moment where you say enough is enough. It's today or never. And if God sees in your heart you're serious about it, why will he hold on? He has to come and embrace you. When the prodigal son said, I shall go to my father, when the father saw him, what did he do? He ran towards him. Amen. We struggle because we are not serious about this holiness thing. And we have that thing. Nobody is perfect. Nobody is perfect. Nobody is perfect. Nobody is perfect to cover up our statue. But the Bible tells us without holiness, nobody can see God. Are you serious about it? 
or you are not serious about it. And then some people, to feel good, they say, oh, you are preaching it. You also, you did this, you did that, you did that. See, you're just putting yourself in a misunderstanding situation. When you're trying to find some uh, bodies for you to feel good in your shortcoming. Doesn't remove your shortcoming. Your shortcoming is still there. So you are the one struggling. And when Jesus comes back, he's not going to judge you based on me. He's going to judge you and he's going to judge me separately. This is about you we're talking about. This is about me we're talking about. Everyone will stand before God on his own. Are you understanding? I said, neighbor, are you serious about this thing? You, got, you better be because this is the kingdom way. Hallelujah. So you may never see the burning bush. You may never see some fire coming and consuming you. But God has a way for everybody. Some people is not dramatic like the light and this and that. But in a peaceful, in a quiet way, you just may not understand what is happening to me. I had a sister tell my wife and I a testimony. She used to dress up very bad and go to the club with her friend. And one time she went to where her friend were. They said, let's go to the club. And they went to the club. As soon as she got there, she said she felt so uncomfortable. She was looking at them the way she drew. They dressed up and said, how are they this way? And then she said, I'm leaving. I got to go home. Then she was asking herself what happened to her. Our answer is, Holy Ghost happened to you. <laughs> Lift up your hands and say, I need the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. This purification thing you can't do it. He must do it. Yes. But you got to go to him and show him how serious you are. Yes. Amen? Yes. Let me move on. There's so many good things, but let me move on. Why is this important to, to see God? Why is it important to see God? Number one benefit there are the noun benefit, things that are happening here. Psalm chapter 16, verse 11. I'm going to talk to you about the noun benefit, things that you can get right away, and the promises of after this life benefit. Amen? So let's look at Psalm 16, verse 11. Read with me, please. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasure at your right hands. Hallelujah. Number one benefit you see there, you make known the path of life. Hallelujah. What does he mean? Revelation of destiny and step to take. It was in the presence of God that God spoke to Jack, Jacob and challenged his identity. In Genesis chapter uh, 32 verse 28, what does the Bible tell us there? It says that no longer... You will be called Jacob. Hallelujah. Say to your neighbor, everybody need a no longer. Everybody need God to tell you no longer you will be this way. From today on, you must be this way. Paul, you were treating my people this way. No longer. Now you're going to be my apostle. You're going to suffer for me. Hallelujah. The problem with many Christians, they've been too long in the church, but never one day they had an encounter where God told them no longer. So they kind of one feet here, one feet here. They are, you see they are battling. Where are you battling? Surrender now. Hallelujah. Let him deal with you. You can't do it. You got to be smarter than that. You can't do it. Let him deal with that. Hallelujah. Amen. Say no longer. Once he discovered his identity, he became a different person. Jacob means the deceiver. When you begin to, to, to look at his life, the man start deceiving since his womb. <laughs> he come out holding the hands and the feet of, 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 of the brother. And he's been battling for the first place. Lying and all kind of things. Goes to the uncle, lies, and whatever he does is lying. Because his identity was corrupt. Hallelujah. 
And God who made him, who knew what he made. Say to your neighbor, neighbor, God knew what he made when he made you. Hallelujah. When you go back to him, he's going to restore you to what? He made you. But see, that thing, what happened? There was a battle. Jacob was fighting with an angel of the law in order to offer any of Christ. Hallelujah. Fighting. He said, and before that happened, you know what? He was alone. The Bible said Jacob took all his family and passed them the other side. And Jacob remained alone. Hallelujah. One of the reasons why we don't see the account of God, because we live our Christianity in group. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. It is in the church that you want to show you Christian. It is when you are your brother and sister you want to show you Christian. But God is calling you to a moment to be alone. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Where you can take a good look of yourself. Amen. And say enough of trying to look good. I know I'm not good. Mm -hmm. And God, I need you yes. to come and help me. And he said, until you bless me, how did he know that this guy can bless you? Somebody fighting you, he said, until you bless me? He got a revelation that this person is not a normal person. I will not let you go. And you can stress from that time, the life of Jacob to automatically change. Hallelujah. Amen. I put in my note, I say, many of us have false idea about who we're supposed to be in life. It comes a time where we, we, we need to meet the one who designed us so that he can redefine and give us a new path for our life. Amen. Secondly, say, you fill, my, you fill me with joy. That's another benefit. Back in Ephesians, I mean, uh, 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 Psalm. Back in uh, Psalm uh, 16, 11. You fill me with Joy. Hallelujah. Joy is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, I say in my note. It does not depend on the circumstances in your life, but happiness does. You're happy when you got money. You're sad when you don't. But you are joyful in either way. How can somebody be in a very difficult situation and still they are a bit, they are okay, they are joyful? Because it is a fruit is in them. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. The answer is God's presence gives us security and a sense of things being under control. Yeah. This is where our joy comes from. Yeah. You know where you are going. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I don't have it today. Lift up your hands and say, I may not have it today. Yeah. But I know I will have it tomorrow. Yeah. See, when you got a sense, that's where joy is coming from. And then the last thing he said, eternal pleasure. Hallelujah. Amen. Eternal pleasure. What does it mean, eternal pleasure? I look for the definition of that word in Hebrew, where the, 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 the way it was translated. This is what it tells me. Happiness produced by the expectation of something good coming your way. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's this excitement that is coming in your life because you are expecting something. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't have money, but my boss say tomorrow paycheck day. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm excited even though I don't have it yet. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's the benefit of seeing God. When you have an encounter with God, he comes with the promises. Yeah. He says, I will make you a great nation. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't have a child yet, but God say he's going to make me father of multitude. Amen. So Abraham is always happy and people don't understand why because he has the promise of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. When you have an encounter with God, God will give you promises. Yes. He said, I know the plan I have for you. Yes. Plan of good, not of evil. Yes. Plan to give you a great future. Yes. He said, and now you are suffering, but the glory I'm paraphrasing, that is coming to you cannot be compared to the suffering that you have today. Yeah. Hallelujah. You are struggling today, but what God has in store for you is greater than what you can imagine. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. When you have that sense, you know one day I will make it. Yes. People are laughing at you today, but I promise you, 
you will have the last laugh. Yeah. Come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I'll continue next time to talk to you about the benefit.